90s X-Men animated show. Season 4, episodes 20 and 21, thoughts. These are parts 3 and 4 of the Beyond Good and Evil arc, the Lazarus Chamber, and end and beginning. So, um, spoilers for the show leading up to and including these two episodes. Another two episodes I absolutely love. Before I get into it, the top link will allow you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the Lazarus Chamber. So, yeah, Cable ends up time traveling to the present in unquestionably, hands down, the coolest looking time machine the show has featured until now. The Grey Malkin a big domed machine thing that like lands on crab legs like I just like to appreciate the crab legs are purely like there because they knew it would look cool like it doesn't make it easier to land as compared to like if it was just flat surface you know like you you as it is you can't land it if it's like if there's just not quite enough room, like what do you, you know, if you like place one crab leg on it and the other one off, like it's not going to be able to stay there, which it would if it was just flat. So purely aesthetic and I'm here for it. And I quite appreciate Beast's musings on, you know, good and evil. And I got to admit, until he said that, I didn't quite appreciate that that is why Apocalypse is thinking this will be the way to, to win. And through Mystique's shape-shifting power, the, a, a trap was set and Xavier is caught. And just, I, I really appreciate three episodes in a row of the, of the four-episode arc, the bad guys keep winning. Like, that's really... You know, you don't see that enough in the live-action movies. But it is a thing in the comics as well. And that brings us to end and beginning. And this is the finale of Season 4, the end of the arc. And it kind of looks like it's the last time we'll see Apocalypse. And, yeah, Apocalypse explains this thing of, you know, good versus evil... And we learn that Magneto wanted to change the future to one where mutants rule, which sounds distinctly House of M. So, yeah, I mean, there's no way they would do the House of M on the show, so I appreciate that little wink and nod for... Or hold on, wait, when when is that story from again? Let's see, House of M... Oh, that's 2005, so actually... I guess it's not very likely that this episode inspired that story. No, ne never mind. Yeah, sometimes I forget how old this show is. But yeah, that's disregard. And I quite like Wolverine and Magneto saving each other. And, you know, Wolverine saving Magneto is like, look at who I'm saving. You'd think I was Xavier. And Magneto saves Wolverine. Look at who I'm saving. You'd think I was an X-Man. You know, that was quite good. And, yeah, just really, really epic four-parter. Loved seeing the, you know, an, a new set of four horsemen. Loved seeing the, the you know, it, they don't quite have the same emotional impact as last time. Because last time we actually got to know them as, as people. So that's, of course, you know, slight downgrade in that regard. Um, let's see. What was the other thing? Right, loved seeing, you know, the, the pyramid way back in 1200 uh, BC. You know, very, very cool. And I think that might be... Right, and, and the the way Apocalypse looked back then, some, some really amazing action across this four-parter. Really cool how they 
managed to fit in all these different factions and I think that might overall be yeah um turns out that the guy who's who we thought had lost his mind that's actually I'm almost certain Immortus so that's I mean he's not really known for just I mean he has a connection to the the time travel element certainly I forget does Immortus um, what do they call it the axis of time is that where he yeah I mean this actually says that um, Yeah, Immortus posing as Bender, the janitor of the Axis of Time. So that is actually um, the, uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's... Yeah, it says, as Bender Immortus guided Bishop through his realm, showing in glimpses of events occurring in the present, uh, provided C Bishop with cryptic information, ultimately led to the X-Men and their allies, defeating Apocalypse, freeing the captured telepaths. Let's see. Yeah, the fortress of Immortus was seemingly destroyed in the process, but after the heroes returned to their native reality, Immortus doffed his Bender disguise and rebuilt and yeah I I mean that is a really cool I I'm not sure we're gonna see any other Kang stuff in the the in this show and certainly you know there's like what 10 episodes left or something and and you know Kang I, I think is also more of an Avengers villain than X-Men villain compared to, for example, Apocalypse and Sinister, who appeared multiple times on this show, they're especially connected to the X-Men, less so the Avengers. Yeah, I mean, this is a quite good way to get a little bit of King in there without, you know, and, and yeah, in, I'm almost certain in the comics there are stories where Apocalypse masters time travel as well, so you know, they were able to do some time travel villainy without involving Kang. Yeah, um, and, and as usual, like, must have been super annoying being an older brother of, you know, someone watching the show back when this episode first aired, because then you have to explain the entire Kang thing to some hyped up, you know, sugar cereal pumping through their veins kid who's like who was that you know the the at the end of the cuz cuz like this episode provides absolutely no like context at all it's just oh bender was secretly someone else this whole time and yeah i you know i had been wondering if this would explore cables relationship, familial relationship with another character. Ultimately, it didn't, so I don't think the show itself will get into it, but Cable is such a, like, I don't think any other medium than, than comic book, maybe video game, but those are the two only mediums where a character like Cable would ever take off. Like, if you tried to introduce a character like Cable. If the first time we ever met Cable was in, like, a movie, it just would never... You know, and you you know, you could try a TV show, you'd need a TV show to explain the entire complicated nature of, you know... But no, you know, people probably wouldn't have kept watching for long enough. But, you know, in a comic book, just, yeah. You know. One of one of the reasons they're one of my favorite mediums. I suppose that is everything 
so so yeah i really appreciate that this was re you know this was changed so that it is now you know if you watch the show on disney plus this is actually this four four part arc is the end of season 4 of the second to last season which really does like this feels like a season closer you know it does not feel like there should be a ton of like it's it's maybe halfway through wait yeah yeah i i believe it's like halfway through if if you in the original um you know i will find it real quick originally beyond good and evil yeah episode let's see part 3 was episode 10 of season 4 so yeah like halfway through oh that's right and originally season 4 only had 17 episodes but yeah uh beyond good and evil part 1 was episode 8 so about halfway through is when it started and then they had you know the christmas one and and you know some xavier yeah just it it i i although okay so originally family ties the one where magneto you know it's revealed that magneto is actually the father of the 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 twins, the the Maximoff twins, that is a good, you know, it's not the biggest episode, but it is an emotional episode, so I do appreciate that as a finale. Anyway, um, yeah, there's, you know, really, really epic storyline. I'm really glad that, you know, it's, this might be the last time we see Apocalypse on the show. I'm really glad that they went so big, that, that he went out in in such a spectacular way instead of just this you know yeah you know and I think and and you know we've also gotten some great I'm not sure we're gonna see Cable again great stuff with him as well yeah I I that is that is everything that I had say for this episode so catch you again tomorrow where i will be talking about parts one and two of the phalanx covenant so yeah make mine marvel